Welcome to the Potter House kitchen build. I was recently commissioned to make this kitchen. Uh, I, this is the first time I've done cabinets, so I was kind of excited to be able to work on this project and doing this sort of thing. And the whole build centered around this kitchen sink that was in the backyard. It was frozen in the ground and it's been there for 30 or 40 years or something like that. And it was just waiting to be used again. So I spent two hours digging it out in the frozen minus 40 weather. I brought it in to map out the kitchen and how this kitchen is, is it's sloped downwards. The whole addition had fallen off the house at one point and then was fixed without picking it back up basically. So there's a flat dining space that pitches downwards into the kitchen. I had to figure out how I was gonna combat that with this build. And that was besides the limitations in design that were decided by the layout of the kitchen window placement, back door, plumbing, stuff like that. So what I was gonna do is to build two pony walls that butt up together sort of parallel. One was a two by four pony wall, one was a two by six pony wall, and the two by six studs had to be cut at slight angles to accommodate the pitch change in the floor. I'm an amateur in this area of construction, so I'm not sure what was the best way to combat this situational problem, but what I did pretty much worked. I had to make this space here in the lean bar fit a dishwasher, the sink. The sink was a certain weird size, and I had to have the dishwasher be beside it, and then it's, you know, it's an L-shaped sort of peninsula style kitchen, and uh, the stove was going on the one part of the L, and that was going to be a certain height, and it's a gas stove, so the countertops had to be a certain height, and I couldn't make it too high, because then everything else just wouldn't work, and then the lean bar would have had to be super tall. Figuring out how all the math would work was kind of difficult. Here I'm just basically fitting in the sink on basically jack walls so that we could see if it would work, and it, and it did work, so that was good. I had to take the jack walls back off and then uh, put in my fascias, which were just plywood. I cut the holes out to kind of accommodate the dishwasher and sink afterwards, seeing if it would fit. This door was found in the basement, I believe, and it, I, I wanted to do some sort of cool little decorative fascia in the front of the lean bar. It's not everyone's taste, but I kind of like doing kind of different sort of things, and which is why I was asked to do this kitchen. I like to use reclaimed and upcycled as much as I can. So there you could see that I had a space for the dishwasher to go in. And then those jack walls go back in place. I wanted to use something super strong to hold up the sink. The sink weighs over 200 pounds, so I didn't want any risk of anything breaking. As for the rest of the bottom cabinets, I was going to do what I think is the proper procedure, making a base for the bottom of the cabinets to sit on. And uh, so we gain about two inches as we go down towards the back of the kitchen. So we're about two inches out of level from one side of the kitchen to the other, which is roughly about 15 feet or so. I'm just guesstimating, but it's about 100 square feet and it's longer than it is wide. So putting together the cabinet boxes was pretty simple. Just glue, pin, nail, and screw and they were pretty strong. I used some three-quarter, uh, what was it, maple plywood, I believe. And then for the drawers, I wanted to reclaim what was found in the house. So we used the dresser uh, drawers for the drawers in the kitchen. There's only three drawers in this kitchen. There's not much space for drawers here, just the way that we had to lay out the kitchen. And the layout of the kitchen was kind of dictated by the window, the back door, and where the plumbing was basically going to have to be. Each cabinet had to be built separately because they were each different sizes, the way that the walls were. It was just kind of awkward. Plus, I've never really done this before, and I don't really work by making a plan first. I kind of keep it all in my head and then go as I go sort of thing but every piece had to be slightly different sized and I wasn't sure exactly if everything was gonna work so I did one piece at a time. The upper cabinets were also a little difficult to do. The, the ceiling has the same pitch as the floor. As I said, the whole addition had fallen down off the house at one point and then was repaired without lifting it back up. So I had to account for that. These cabinets, of course, are a little shallower as is normal 
but they're very tall and they go a little lower than a, a typical standard height for today's standard kitchen. We did what was in the house originally. We found the original cabinets in the basement and modeled the, uh, these cabinets basically just as those ones were. Everything is cut to size roughly and then ripped on the table saw to get them nice and square. Then I checked for square with some squares and tape measures. And then uh, we found some other wood in the basement that we used for shelving so we were able to reclaim some more stuff. A lot of this build is made out of brand new materials but I like to use as much as I can that is kind of found, reclaimed, upcycled sort of thing. The middle cabinet was built after the two side cabinets were put in because we weren't sure if there was going to be a microwave or not yet. So we kind of put them in place and then hoped that we would get a middle cabinet in there. But it was actually pretty easy. The wall is very bowed and it wanes quite a bit. So we had to dick around a little bit with it, but it came out pretty good. We decided not to go with a microwave in this kitchen. so. We just basically put in a regular cabinet and then a regular hood fan. Then we put a cabinet above the fridge. We used some more reclaimed wood found in the basement to trim out the rest of the bar and side of the cabinet. Just some trim pieces that were used uh, in previous parts of the house at one point and then saved by the, the previous owner. This is basically a hoarder's house, so there was nothing thrown out. I used all that to trim out the door, and then I used other new 1x4 lumber to trim out the rest of the bar and side of the cabinet. I thought it would look really good. The walls were pretty waned. They're lath and plaster walls, so I had to scribe a line on this one piece and fit it back in after cutting it, and it worked out pretty well. I am by no means a fine woodworker or finisher or cabinet maker. I mean, I was a framer for a couple of years there and uh, from there I decided to get into doing more projects that were more interesting to me. And this one kind of taught me a little more on how to do uh, this type of work. Of course, we're using regular sort of SPF lumber grade wood, but it kind of suited this farm style, sort of rustic slash semi-industrial kitchen build just fine. And as I continue to learn, of course I'll get better at this craft. Here I had to do some custom sort of shaping to fit a piece for the hood fan. Uh, the stove is not a standard size stove, so it called to have a little dressing, I guess you could say, around the hood fan so it didn't look out of place and too small. All the cabinet boxes are made out of plywood and so to hide the ply I just did what you would see on many typical kitchen builds. It's basically you just hide the ply with a piece of fascia made out of uh, pine or whatever, whatever uh, different different budgeted kitchens are obviously going to use different materials, different woods. Here in this case I just used SPF which is uh, an abbreviation of spruce pine fir. To the left of the sink it was kind of a too small of a cabinet to use for a normal cupboard space, at least I thought. I mean I'm not exactly a uh, professional chef who knows exactly where everything should be in a kitchen. But I figured I would still use the space as best I could, so I took another one of those drawers and then kind of hacked it apart and then put it back together and made it a tea towel and dish soap sort of pull-out drawer that stands up. I don't know what those are called. Uh, like I said, this, these are my first cabinets. So I basically just hacked it apart and then built it back together and then stuck it back in the hole. And then it was on to build the doors of the cabinets. And those are made out of a tongue and groove beadboard, I guess you could say, something that you would see in uh, an old kitchen. Or even like this stuff is meant to be uh, sort of a cheaper wainscoting, I guess, for a rustic themed room or something like that. Uh, you can use it for other things. Lots of people use it on their ceilings or whatnot. I was trying to find a much thicker version of this wood, but the, the best I could find was 
three eighths, so I had to use it. It actually turned out fine. I basically built them in the exact same style as the ones that were found in the basement, which were also held together with glue and a brace. I did them for each cabinet box, except for obviously where the drawers were gonna be. In this kitchen, we we're doing a wood countertop, and in this style, kind of a farm style, we wanted to go with a wood countertop, except for by the range. So here I am measuring out a spot that will match the right side of the range where we can have a different non-combustible material so that it could pass code. The range sits a little too high for a combustible material countertop, so we are gonna go with a concrete. Building this countertop around this copper pipe, we really wanted to keep the copper pipe uh, exposed to kind of give it that industrial element, sort of more artistic look, so that was uh, kind of tricky. Here I am marking out this countertop for the glue up so that I could glue it up as close as I could to it being laid out on the countertop so that it would be easier to put it in with minimal trimming or adjustments. Everything was glued uh, like a typical lamination for any sort of countertop, I guess you could say. This wood is a lower quality, so it was difficult to kind of get it together, which was fine. Uh, this is a rustic build, so it, it worked out great. All I did was just take an electric planer, and I know that a lot of people are kind of against this tool because it's not, it doesn't really have a place in fine woodworking. It kind of does more damage than good if you're looking for a super smooth project. This didn't need to be super smooth. This actually worked perfect for what we were trying to get. So for color for the countertops, we were sort of going to match it to a butcher block that was going to be used for the island. So I basically did a first wash of a lighter color to kind of give it some age and then I was going to let that set up, see how I liked it. While all that was drying, I put in all the hardware. I found some uh, hardware that was super similar to the original hardware that was on the remaining cabinets that were left in the basement. It's basically just a, a, a brass colored simple hardware and I was pretty excited when I found stuff that matched almost exactly. Once I was done that and the counters were dry, I washed it again with a darker, richer color and this was pretty close to the butcher block. For the code requirements, we needed something that was non-combustible so we did this underlay concrete sort of cement base underlay self-leveler stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's kind of like a concrete. And we put that on either side of the range or the stove or whatever you want to call it. After that, I polyed everything uh, countertop wise. And I just basically used Minwax products for this specific build. I'm getting into using other sorts of stains and stuff, but this was perfect for this. Between each coat of the uh, poly, I also sanded it. So I did this several times. I sanded, polyed, sanded, polyed, sanded, polyed until I figured it was a pretty durable finish. I wanted it to be a good usable worktop. And then it was finished. This was a good learning experience for me and I hope to be able to do it again. I have a long ways to go to become an actual cabinet maker, but this is a good start. Thank you.